G'day ladies and gents and welcome aboard the LA-174. Now, when I did my original first impressions of this aircraft, it was battle rating 8. The LA-15 was battle rating 8.3 and it was a horrible experience to fly this aircraft. Coupled with its normal, uh, its overheating issues and issues with speed control, incredibly low wing braking point, coupled with the aircraft that it was facing at the time, it was just not a great aircraft to fly. But not long after I did that first impressions, it had a BR reduction. And I never went back to look at it. And it has, I have had a lot of requests to do this, to actually go back and check this plane out. So here it is. Now, the first question, has the BR reduction affected matchmaking at all? Not in the slightest. This plane still faces exactly the same machines it was facing before. The LA-174 at 7.7 .7 will not face the F-86 F-2 Sabre. That is it. That is the only aircraft it will not face, but the LA-15 will. And considering these two aircraft are almost identical, uh, yeah. I'm still yet to face a team that doesn't consist of F-25s at any time. Actually, the one that's really scary at the moment is the Japanese F-30 Sabre, arguably the best of the F-86 Sabres that the Allied forces get access to. You know, we're excluding the CL-13 here. It's not a Sabre, it's a spaceship. But it's only battle rating 8.3. It falls into these battles almost guaranteed every single time you queue this aircraft up, and its performance just blows this thing away. Under 700 kilometers an hour, you can't go use 100% throttle. You've got to cruise around on 90 or you'll overheat your engine. You cannot weapon any time. If you do, the engine will kill itself in under 30 seconds. The terminal wing braking point of this series of aircraft is only 910 kilometers an hour, so you cannot outdive and outrun. The only thing the aircraft seems to be capable of doing, and I have seen this done, is it's highly maneuverable. I have seen it manage to engage in turn battles with F9 F Panthers. I have never been able to achieve the results myself. Now, I'm not entirely sure if these were just incredibly good uh, LA-174, LA-15 pilots, or whether or not a large amount of this aircraft's performance is actually tied up in its upgrade system. Until I have it fully upgraded, I will, I, I really won't know. I won't be able to answer that question. But I have seen it done, which does give me some hope for the future performance of this aircraft. Now, as for the upgrade status of mine, my LA-174 is still stock. I still don't have the airframe unlocked. I really haven't flown it much at all since I did the first impressions video. It is it is a plane that I'm going to probably put some time into in the very near future. Speaking of Japanese Sabres, there's the first one showing up. And it's a bit of a trial for me because I do like the plane. I like the way it handles. Yeah, the overheating issues can be a bit of an issue. It does take a bit of practice bit working the throttle, but I'm used to working with planes that have a tendency to cook themselves if you push them too hard. So I can work around that. It's just the fact that it winds up in battles against planes that could set themselves to 90% throttle and will still outperform you. The armament is three NS-23, 23mm cannons, and I like the armament better than I do on the MiG-15. In fact, if I had an option to change the 37mm off the MiG-15 and place in a third NS cannon, I would. I really like these guns. They do have a tendency to spray a little bit, but they're far more reliable a weapon system than the 37mm cannon. There goes the Sabre. Energy retention on the aircraft is not incredibly high either, as you can see, pushing it through this rollover, I dropped from near on 880 kilometers an hour down to only 500 in a relatively simple maneuver, but it does do the maneuver incredibly tight. The maneuver is nice, it's clean. You can bring yourself onto target's tails if you were facing aircraft that couldn't just point away from you and run. Very limited and controlled usage of the WEP will allow you to regain speed rapidly. You just need to be aware you cannot leave it on for exceptionally large periods of time. As you're looking at my temperature gauges right now with the WEP on, you can see I've already overheated the oil in the very limited amount of time that I've been running the WEP. As my airspeed drops down, I'm going to have to kill it in a moment, simply to start letting the plane pull off. And there's the water overheat and WEP off. If I can get the airspeed up, at over 500, they'll start cooling down. They will not overheat at over 700, but trying to maintain over 700 in this aircraft is incredibly difficult to do. So back in the clouds and back on approach to the next F-25, 
the team was good. This was probably the best matchmaking you can hope for. You cannot get a space where this plane is top tier. At least I've never experienced it. However, with the CL-13s and the MiG-15s winding up in battles, you can now get teams where you will have them. Part of the problem with the old matchmaking system for this aircraft is at the time, at top tier, Germany and Russia were not on the same side. So what would happen in cases such as bringing out the LA-174 or the LA-15, unless you had a large number of people flying the MiG-15 right at the time you wanted to bring out the LA, you would regularly find yourself flying with MiG-9s, which at the time were also at a much higher tier than they are now. With the current matchmaking, why people may not like the German CLs fighting on the Russian side, and I'm not a particularly great fan of it myself, it will guarantee that you always have some high-level aircraft with you. You'll have a combination of German and Russian MiGs and probably a few CLs floating around when you bring it out. So while you are the, the lowest in terms of importance to your team, you are the lowest performance aircraft in the battleground, you will have backup floating around you that is incredibly high performance, which should, unless the enemy team targets you specifically, give you enough time to be able to put this plane in a place where you may be able to make a difference. Now as you can see I've pulled the throttles back to 90%, I'm trying not to overcook the engine, I'm only doing 580 and at 100% throttle at sub 700, as I said before, the engines will cook. 90% seems to be the sweet spot, providing you're going around 5 to 600, you won't overcook at this speed, if you are below 500 kilometers an hour you must drop it down to 80, otherwise you will cook the engine. Speed is important, which is ironic on an aircraft that will break its wings at 910 kilometers an hour. Now I'm just cruising over the mountains towards the enemy base at the moment. I'm trying to place myself in a spot where allied or enemy aircraft rather are going to have to go through me in order to get to the runway. Because of the low speed of this aircraft, I, I need to place myself in a way that they're going to come to me. First target comes in, F-86A5. Now I make an incredible mistake here. I fire the shots and I get the kill, but I take a burst of 50 cal to the face. Head-on's bad. I slap myself on the wrist after doing this. The 23mm cannons did do their work and take out the Sabre, but as you can see I've got critical fuselage damage, my engine is bright red and once this thing has taken engine damage it will die. I've backed it off the throttles to try and increase the longevity of the engine. I am almost two thirds of the way across the map from my own runway, it is a long flight home. I'm throwing myself into a gentle dive, I'm trying to keep my airspeed as high as I possibly can with the throttles pulled right back, but the engine goes black anyway, so in a moment I'm just going to throttle up to 100%, I'm going to ride the thrust for as long as I've got it to get me as close as I can to the base. The glide characteristics on this aircraft are not incredibly good, so I need to get it as close to the runways as I possibly can to put it back on the ground. Now I'm choosing the path that I'm choosing because I have an allied CL-13 to my rear and I have a number of MiG-15s to my front. While there is a Japanese F-86 that they are engaged with, I'm assuming with three fighters in front of me and one behind, if anything comes in to have a shot at me while I'm trying to get this thing back to base, somebody should engage it. Now my plan was to go past the small mountain just to the right of my cursor to the north end of the runway. I'm likely not going to have an engine operating by the time I get there. It is the lowest point in the mountains around the edge of that runway. I should be able to glide the plane around and put it down. It's not going to be a pretty landing, but I should be able to make it. And that's when I flick the camera around and realize I have an F9F that is currently tailing me and closing in rapidly. Still, the aircraft may be critically damaged, but I should be able to get it within flak range of the runway, which might be enough to make it break off. Or at the very least, if I can get it close enough to those MiG-15s, one of them is going to turn around and swat it for me. So I still have hope. And there goes my engine. And that went a lot sooner than I was anticipating. 2.9 k's off my rear, I'm getting worried here, so I quickly punch a message through to the team, just, you know, is anybody going to clear this F9F off my tail? He's, he's right there and he's completely target fixated on me, and that's when I realise I'm dead. There's another F9F that is guarding the runway, waiting for people and stragglers to come back to intercept them. Well, I'm not going down without a fight, dip the nose down for a bit of speed, get control, and there's my second kill. 
Unfortunately, that was the moment that I killed myself one way or another, firing the gun, sheared off an easy 100 kilometers an hour off my speed. I'm struggling to maintain enough. I'm going to clear the first mountain, but even if I wasn't, in, uh, wasn't intercepted at this point in time, I don't think I'd have enough airspeed to clear the second. And just as I'm passing over, all that F9, F to my rear, comes through and finishes the job. So, results of the match. Second place for the team with two kills and a death. Fighter Rescuer, Grand Forces Rescuer, Terror of the Skies, 41,018 silver lines, 2,484 research points. On a premium account, no double. And as you can see, I'm still working on the fuselage repair, so I've still got a ways to go to find out what this plane is capable of when it's fully upgraded. But the important question has been answered. Has that down tier assisted in its matchmaking at all? And the answer is no. It's still facing exactly the same machines it was facing when it was first introduced to the game. The only difference is now it's the reliability of the teams, including more aircraft that are able to assist you, is much higher. It was not uncommon when this plane first went into the game to find yourself in matches against the forces that you just saw, but only having maybe a single MiG-15 on your team. Nothing to back you up. A load of MiG-9s involved as well. It was a slaughter. I actually want to get this thing upgraded. I, w I want to do two jewels in it. I want to put this thing against a stock 262 and see how the two compare. And then I want to find somebody who's got a fully upgraded 262 once I have the upgrades on this aircraft maxed and do exactly the same thing, fully upgraded versus fully upgraded and find out how they compare. I'm curious whether or not this will be a better match for that aircraft, although I suppose the Russians already have the MiG-9 for it. I would expect with upgrades from what I've seen, it should be vastly superior, but then you look at the base performance of the plane and how much of its performance is tied up in those upgrades. It's supposed to be about 10 to 15%, unless it's something more like 30 I'm not seeing this aircraft as being hugely competitive, but there's only one way to find out. Now, for our next match today, we're in the Yak-17. I've been trying to get some decent battles in this plane for the last couple of days with the intent to do a first impressions video, but uh, honestly, I've been having a lot of trouble finding anything, any form of useful footage. This is one of the best rounds I've ever actually had in this aircraft. Now the problem with this aircraft is, well, to be blunt, it's crap. It, its armament is two NS 23mm cannons, same as the LA-174, just only two of them. 60 rounds a gun, the ammo load is light, but the guns are okay. Uh, that's really the only good selling point for the aircraft. Now I'm just keeping it low and fast, this match was incredibly F-80C heavy and they've all decided to try and rush the entry point to the map. They're all flying at incredibly low altitude, and they're even trying to maneuver, which is putting this thing into the one thing this plane can do. It is maneuverable. First shots didn't give enough lead on. Put the combat flaps on this time, bring the plane around sharper. F-80C is still trying to turn with me, which is just stupid. I don't know why he's doing that. Good solid hit. Second lead, critical hit, setting on fire. But I'm a little worried about that fire potentially going out, so lining back up. Third shot's in to execute the target. Now I'm sure you're going to say, well it looks like it's a manoeuvrable aircraft, and for a jet, yes it is. It's manoeuvrability, it is easily the most manoeuvrable jet aircraft in the game, without a doubt. Unfortunately, that isn't really saying much when you start thinking about it. Now at this moment, I'm in 39 rounds of ammunition, so I'm trying to bug out of the area. I've, I've got to get this thing back to base. Try and get it down on the runway and for a reload. With the 60 rounds per gun and the firing rate on the guns, uh, this thing isn't in for a sustained fight. It intercepts and eliminates a single target and then you get it the hell out of the area. It looks like I'm going to have a clean run out. Now, maneuverability. Uh, this is partially a problem. The maneuverability of the aircraft is excellent. The problem is it's not as good as any prop that it could potentially face. The, the thing that is here is its turning circle is about the same as a Bearcat on combat flaps running web, which is great for a jet fighter. But a Bearcat can pull back on its throttle to tighten its turning circle. If you try and do that in the Yak-17, you despool the engine, and the spool-up time on the engine on this aircraft in stock format is 12 seconds. Now obviously I make it back to base, and you know, I'm wheel-standing on the nose, putting it back on the runway. 
fold up the flaps and it drops the back wheels on, pull it under brake and then we pull it in. So with the repairs done we're getting ready to take off, unfortunately the rest of the team has died. It's me and a MiG-9 that are on the runway at the moment and a third, a second MiG-9 rather that is in the air fighting an F-84, an F-8F and an F-80C. It is a three on three fight, but two of us are on the ground, so I'm trying to get up where I might be able to assist and try and eliminate that bear cat for starters to make life easier on the MiG-9. So as I was saying, with a 12 second spool up time, if you back the throttles off, while you will increase the maneuverability of the aircraft in the short term and you may be able to get on the tail of the target and eliminate it, if that target drops its nose down to run, you throttle up. You say you drop back to 50% for the turn, you've got 6 seconds before you can develop full thrust and start pursuing. In 6 seconds, he's well out of gun range and getting ready to make his turn to line his shots back up on you. In the speed area, it's not really that great either. Its level flight speed without a dive is only 600 kilometers an hour, which is about the, well, slightly slower to about the same as most of the props in Era 4. In terms of maximum dive speeds, while its dive acceleration is incredibly good, especially in initial dive because it's such a light aircraft, its wing braking point's only 760 kilometers an hour. Uh, it cannot sustain any more than that, and its warning comes on at 730. From 730 to 760, the plane shakes so harshly you'll have trouble hitting any target whatsoever with those NS-23s. Now how bad is that dive speed? Well, considering there are aircraft in Era 3 that can dive past 800 kilometers an hour, you begin seeing why this plane is crap. It's maneuverable, but it's not as maneuverable as any of the props that it'll face, at least not if the pilot is intelligent. And why it is more maneuverable than the jets that it will face, in most cases the jets will simply just point the nose away and run away from it. It cannot catch them. Its initial dive speed is great, but its dive speed, terminal dive speed, is so low that um, if you try and do it too often, you'll likely break your wings on a fairly regular basis. Uh, otherwise, you'd constantly be pulling out of dives. And at 760 kilometers an hour, well, there are bombers that can catch this thing in a dive. Now the MiG-9 that was airborne has been eliminated, our second MiG-9 is now off the deck and I'm trying to get what airspeed this thing is capable of getting in the short term up and a little bit of altitude to come back in and try and defend the second MiG-9. If I can keep it alive, we might have a chance at this. He's made a smart move, he's turned away, I'm going to see if I can get a shot on the F-84. But I've got an F-80C diving in on the MiG-9, there's no way known I'm going to be able to intercept that, so I stay on target, I'm hoping the F-84 will come back, and the MiG-9 has died, so it's now me versus the three remaining Allied planes. Yep, this, needless to say, this battle was not a win. Taking into account the overall performance capabilities and limitations of this aircraft, the AK-17 sits in exactly the same place as I put the AK-15. Why is this in the game? Now keep in mind, these planes were on the original Gaijin release tree, so they've had this thing planned to enter the game since Alpha. Somebody spent the time to make a flight model for it, somebody spent the time to model the design, to create the textures, to create the animations for the aircraft. Tried to nose-to-nose -nose Bearcat, I get my wing shot off, and the Bearcat survives. But yeah, somebody at Gaijin spent the time to actually build this aircraft. But what is it meant to be fighting? Now with the whole team eliminated, let's go check out the results. So, results for the match. First place for the team with one F-80C kill, but I didn't survive. Uh, Bomber Rescuer, the best squad, Terror of the Skies, 21,165 Silver Lions, and 1,814 RP. Overall, it was a pretty, a, a pretty pitiful match. It really was. But it was the first time I ever got this thing into first place. And an F-80C kill is an F-80C kill. But that still brings about the question, why is this aircraft in the game? It's not as maneuverable as any prop fighters that it can face with competent pilots. It's barely as fast as most of those prop fighters. Its initial dive acceleration is incredibly good, but its terminal dive speed is below that of most Era 3 fighters, let alone Era 4s. 
Any Jetsa that can face, and I mean any, including the P-80, will easily outrun it in a straight line. Make no mistake, the only reason I got that F-80C is because he kept turning rather than pointing the nose away from me and just pushing the throttles to maximum and flying away. There's... Everything it does is countered by something else that it faces. It has no advantages in any combat situation at all. It just seems to me to be a plane that it was a waste of resources to create in the first place. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.